Hello, people of the web world. I'm very excited to start this JavaScript for the beginner tutorial series. The thing that excites me the most is we are going to learn JavaScript from the very scratch, all the basics. Anyone can take this tutorial up without any prior knowledge of JavaScript, also without any prior knowledge of programming in general. This is going to be for everyone. So let's get started. So JavaScript is usually accepted, approved, and applauded by a lot of corporate spaces, a lot of corporate uh, companies out there. And JavaScript has very well proved itself to be that favorite programming language for the developers out there. May it be uh, front-end development, back-end development. I work in a gaming company where we use JavaScript for dynamic content sharing using uh, amazing um, frameworks like React.js, Vue.js, there are a lot of them out there. Also on the back end it is used with uh, for Node.js like server setups and stuff like that. Um, I, I believe it's used it's used in game engines as well. A couple of them supports it. Cocos, there's Cocos Builder and Unity uses C Sharp. Yeah, Cocos Builders I guess uses JavaScript as well. So you can do a lot of things with JavaScript. It's like an all-around go-to programming language for developers all around. I like to call it the language of gods. I think gods speak JavaScript. Yeah, gods communicate with JavaScript. I'm very positive about that. Trust me. All right. So let's set up the environment for JavaScript or the programming language of gods. So we'll be using Visual Studio Code to write our code. You can download it by just going through the VS Code website. Just say download VS Code. It's an official product from Microsoft and developers and industries around love it and recommend it as well. It's very clean. It does the job very precisely. So you can go ahead and download for Windows or Linux or Mac, whichever you want. I already have it downloaded. So let's dive right in here. Cool. So I'll open this folder, which I already have created on my desktop. Uh, JavaScript tutorial, there you go. All right, I'll create a file and call it index.html. We're not going to work a lot with HTML, but that's to show, bring on table some basics. Also create a CSS file called style CSS and also our app.js file, our main hero. As you can see, all of these files are empty for now. You can go to index.html file, type yeah, magic, you see right from the start, there's so much of magic going around. I'll show you guys one more time. Press exclamatory mark and then press tab and this will come up. This is the title, you can make, you can change it whatever you want. I would say the godly language. Cool, I link my styles here. Now inside body will write over JavaScript. You can write JavaScript just by giving the script tag. Yeah, here you can you can write JavaScript, but this is not a very recommendable approach. So you want to create an external JavaScript file and link that file here inside the body because consider if you have a lot of JavaScript files inside one application, you cannot write all of that code here. I mean, you can, but then, then again, that will be a mess. All you have to do is you, you give a path to your app.js file. Cool. Now, console.log hello, the people of web world. So God is console locking us, telling us hello, webbing all of us. And you open it with live server. I'll, I'll explain what is live server and how you can use it. Yeah, you can see our index.html file is loaded here. If you go and inspect it in the console, you see hello, the people of web world coming from God, which is, so this is our index file that has been launched and in the script, we have our app.js loaded from which we have logged the console. So whenever you write anything inside console.log, it's going to log that string inside 
console now how you can open the console is pretty simple you press f12 and it comes up or else you can go or you can right click and say inspect and it will open the same thing for you you can go to the console so live server is an extension you can press this icon in the vs code go there click it and there are thousands of cool extensions available here i have a couple of them but you need what you need to do is install live server live server yeah this is the one i've already installed it but you go ahead and there might be an install option here do it the next thing you can go to your html file right click and open it with live server now what happens here this is used in a way where you can just make changes here save it and it automatically reflects here you don't have to go and initialize or refresh this uh, index.html again and again every time you make a change here as we can see the console log is no more here it's vanished now if you get it going again and save it you will be able to see it and if you do not have live server extension then you'll have to save things here and then go and refresh things here live server does that for us here so the most important thing to understand here is the sequence of all these files the styling the html and the js files inside our index.html file we need to first link our CSS file that has to be in the top. Then comes the body where our HTML code would go, our all our divs and our HTML code, or oh, not HTML, HTML code. Oops. Yeah, the code would go here, and at the end we need to link our script. If we mess the sequence of this script, we use this up somewhere here before the style sheet or after the style sheet, that's going to mess it up. We are not advised to change the sequence of this because what happens here is the this whole file is loaded from top to bottom. So the compiler goes from, so it's che it checks for the style sheet here, it loads it. Now the style sheet is applied to our HTML. Whatever classes we have created there are applied to our elements. And then after that, we have our script tag which we might have a written code to grab some elements from our div and do some manipulations here, like dynamic content changing or, or selecting some content. Consider if you take this script up here somewhere, so the compiler would go from the top and come here. It will check for the tile shade. And after that, it will come here to the script and try to find an element which has not been rendered yet. It's not in the document yet because here we are checking for an div, but that div basically is here. So the sequence has to be maintained the way it is. We should basically we're not advised to change the sequence of anything in, in general, in life as well. We should not mess around with sequence. I mean, you cannot die first and live later, yeah? Sure, that's deep. Well, that's about this video, guys. We have our environment all set it up. And in the next video, we'll start with the basic uh, JavaScript concepts.